In the videos in this honors lesson, you'll learn some tips for working with different versions of Hive, Impala, and Hue. When you're working as a data analyst in the real world, it's important to be able to adapt to different versions of these tools. The VM that you've been using for this course has specific versions of Hive and Impala and Hue installed on it, but a company or organization you're working for might use different versions. Also, if you're interested in taking the Cloudera Certified Associate Data Analyst Certification Exam, the exact versions of Hive, Impala, and Hue that you'll need to use to complete that exam might not match the versions on this course VM. So you'll need to be prepared to deal with different versions. In this video, I'll discuss Hive and Impala. Then in the next video, I'll talk about Hue. Over time, additional capabilities have been added to Hive and Impala, and some of the default behaviors have changed. So if you're using a new or unfamiliar instance of Hive or Impala, or if there might have been a version update on the instance you're using, it's good to check what the version is. To see exactly what version of Hive or Impala you're using, run the SQL statement select version, open close parentheses. Version is a special built-in function that returns a character string containing version information. When you run select version, that returns a result with a single row and a single column containing that character string. The most important part to look for is the first set of numbers that appears in that string. For example, 2.10.0 for Impala or 1.1.0 for Hive. If you're using a version of Hive or Impala that was distributed by Cloudera, then you'll also see a Cloudera platform version number after CDH. In both of the examples shown here, the Cloudera platform version is 5.13.0. After those numbers, you might also see some build information, but you can usually ignore that. The examples here show the output when you use this version function in Hive and Impala, but you can use the version function with many other SQL engines too, including MySQL and PostgreSQL. Once you know what version of Hive or Impala you're using, the best way to get detailed information about that version is to review the documentation. For Hive, you can find the documentation by going to hive.apache.org and clicking the link for Language Manual. For Impala, you can go to impala.apache.org and click the link for Documentation. However, for Impala, if you're using a version that was distributed by Cloudera, it's easier to use the Impala documentation that's hosted on Cloudera's website. To access that, follow the provided link. I'll first show the Hive language manual and demonstrate how you can find version-specific information there. The Hive language manual is structured as a wiki that members of the Hive developer and user communities can contribute to. From the main language manual page, you can click to access subpages. Under data retrieval queries, I'll click the link for select. And here you can see that there are many details about the syntax of the select statement in HiveQL, which is the name for Hive's dialect of SQL. Interspersed throughout this content, you'll see references to changes that occurred in different versions of Hive. For example, under the heading All and Distinct Clauses, there is a note that says Hive supports select distinct star starting in release 1.1.0. You might recall that a select distinct star query returns the distinct full rows in a table. Hive versions earlier than 1.1.0 did not support this. The version on the course VM that you've been using is 1.1.0 or later, so it does support this. Often, you can get additional information about a feature that was added to Hive by clicking a link included in the note. This takes you to the Apache Hive issue tracking system. There is often lots of technical information included here that's beyond the scope of this course, 
but it can be helpful to read the title and description fields and to check the fix version, which tells you what version of Hive first had this feature. One page in the Hive language manual that is especially useful to consult for version information is the Operators and User Defined Functions, or UDFs, page. The title of this page is a bit confusing. With Hive, when people use the term User Defined Function, or UDF, this often encompasses built-in functions. On this page, there are sections listing the different types of operators and built-in functions available in Hive. For example, there's a section listing Hive's conditional functions. I'll click the link to go to that section. In the description field for some of these functions, you'll see notes indicating the version of Hive in which the function was first included. For example, the null if function was added in Hive version 2.3.0. So if the version of Hive you're using is 2.3.0 or higher, then the null if function is available, otherwise it's not available. If you're using a version of Hive that was distributed by Cloudera, there are some cases where the Cloudera engineers make a new feature or function available early. So it's a good idea to test the feature or the function yourself on the version of Hive you're using to verify that it's consistent with what the Hive documentation says. Now I'll show how to use the Impala documentation that's hosted on Cloudera's website. There are many different sections of Cloudera's Impala documentation, but I'll focus here on the Impala SQL language reference, which you can get to by following the provided link. From this main page, you can click to access subpages. I'll click to go to the page for built-in functions. Here you can see further subpages for the different categories of built-in functions. I'll click to go to the Impala conditional functions page. Impala and Hive have many of the same built-in functions, but there are some differences. So the list of functions here does not exactly match the list I showed in the Hive documentation. In the descriptions of many of the functions here, there are notes indicating what version of Impala the function was added in. For example, the null if function was added to Impala in version 1.3.0. In some of the notes, you'll also see a Cloudera platform version number which begins with CDH. That's because recent versions of Impala are bundled with specific versions of the Cloudera platform, and it's sometimes more convenient to use this Cloudera platform version number. If you know which version of the Cloudera platform you're using, in other words, which CDH version you're using, then there is a trick that can help you navigate the Impala documentation. In the URL for all of the Impala documentation pages, you should see the word latest. This means that you're viewing the documentation for the most recent version of the Cloudera platform. You can see the specific version number this corresponds to at the top of the page. In the URL, you can replace the word latest with a specific CDH version number to see the Impala documentation for that specific version of the Cloudera platform. But you need to format the version number a certain way. You use dashes instead of dots and change the final digit to an X. For example, if you're using version 5.13.0 of the Cloudera platform, then you can replace latest with 5-13-X. After making that change to the URL, I'll press enter. And now I'm viewing a different version of the Impala documentation that specifically describes the version of Impala that's bundled with the 5.13 versions of the Cloudera platform. I recommend using this trick whenever you're using Impala on a specific version of the Cloudera platform that's not the latest version. By using the Hive and Impala documentation in the ways I described in this video, you should be able to resolve most questions about what features are available in what versions 
of Hive and Impala. As you browse the documentation, you'll notice there is a lot of information there about topics that you have not yet learned about in this course. If you see something in the documentation that you don't understand, it's okay to just ignore it for now. We'll cover many of these topics later in this course and in the other courses that are part of this specialization.